Hey guys, Darren here. Welcome to Mayhem Country Living. Hope you guys are doing okay wherever it is that you are. You can see from the background, I am home again. And I wanted to talk to you about something. This is April 1st. Uh, we have been three months, January, February, March, into 2023. Let's do kind of an overview of the first quarter not the first fiscal financial quarter but the first quarter of 2023 in uh, January 2023 gas prices rose March they dipped to make the sheep feel good and then it rose slightly again um, not as high as it once was. For those of you who are familiar, look at and review the Overton window, and that will get you some good insight into what's going on. Food prices, same damn thing. Um, take a look at what's going on and everything. Now, all of that aside, I want to talk to you about what's going to be happening this year. In 2023, we are going to be consuming the foods and the resources that were grown in 2022. And I'm going to show you. Spin you around. I'm going to show you. Chili. We did this in 2022. Tomatoes we did in 2022, and I can show you squash, uh, green beans, potatoes, everything that we canned in 2022 for 2023. The stuff we ate in 2022 came from the harvest of 2021. Now you guys know all this. This is nothing. This is nothing profound. You know this, but you might not like, ah, yeah. You know it, but you might not know it all the time. So we are always eating and consuming from the prior harvest, unless, you know, we are, you know, butchering a steer or a hog, something like that. Uh, unless we are doing like, um, you know, some sort of uh, crawfish festival, something like that, where we harvest fresh and consume then. That doesn't happen to most people. Most people are not familiar with that. What we need to do is be aware that everything that we're going to consume in 2023 is going to be from 2022. For the most part, grains, corns, oils, fruits and vegetables that are grown from further out, anything that is canned in a can or preserved in a jar. More to come. Okay, guys, now we're back. So, you see behind me that uh, upright freezer, everything in there. came from a prior year. Now, I may be saving for X amount further back if I can preserve it well enough, but nothing is fresh because we just don't eat fresh that much. Again, like I said, unless on the rare occasion when we do uh, some sort of, uh, you know, cookout or, you know, dinner, something like that where there's, you know, a fresh harvest or, you know, we butcher a goat, pig, or a cow. That is uncommon for most people. I don't know of many of you who have gone to, uh, uh, to, to a barbecue where uh, you are eating fresh goat. It's delicious. Um, or a hog. Again, it's wonderful. Or a steer, you know, depending on where you are. It's wonderful. That don't happen often. 
for the most part, the consumers, consumers are eating the prior year's harvest. Now, we have all watched all these super duper YouTube channels that do all this stuff about the doom and gloom and what's coming down the pike and we're all gonna be whatever, starving, and eating very little. Everything that they're talking about is because of the problems that we're having in the food supply. 2023 is going to be a very impactful year for our food industry because of all the shortages from the previous year. And that's true. That, that, that is true. Please, you know, proof me and check me. This is going to be a tough year because Americans have never really seen this before. In America, it's the uncommon thing that you can get up at any time of night and drive within 10 miles for if you live in a city and you can get something to eat or something to drink. Something like that. 2023 is going to be an eye-opener for a lot of people. The shortages and the restrictions for the most part, because of everything going on with the economy and also with the production, 2024 is actually going to be a lot worse, in my opinion, um, unless, you know, it starts raining manna from heaven or something like that. Be aware, be alert. I just want you guys to know, don't consider buying an extra can of something as spending money. That is actually a bank, a food, that is a battery that you can charge and draw from. Consider all the food in your pantry, your deep pantry, in your basement, your bunker, whatever it is you want to call it, in your root cellar, whatever it is you want to call it, that is your battery, or that is your bank. For you to make withdrawals from your bank, your food bank, your food battery, you have to first make a deposit or charge it. Make sure you do. Because it hasn't gotten bad yet, in my opinion. Who knows? I could be crazy. Hope you guys are doing well. Hope everyone is safe. Take care of your people. Charge your food battery. Make deposits in your food bank. See ya.